Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed, Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known and from you, no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us together pray the contemporary calling. O God, you we have prepared for those who love you such good things as surpass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading today is taken from the book of Acts. Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athens, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription to an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown is this I proclaim to you, the God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed everything, since himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live, so that they would search for God and perhaps look for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from each one of us, for in him we live and move and have our being. As even some of you own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image form for the earth and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people 
everywhere to repent because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judge in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm today is Psalm 67. The refrain, God holds our soul in life. Bless our God, you peoples, Make the voice of his praise to be heard. Who holds our sword in life and will not allow our feet to slip? For you, O oh God, have proved us. You have tried us just as silver is tried. You brought us into the snare. You laid heavy burden upon our backs. You let enemies ride over our heads. We went through fire and water for you brought us out into the place of refreshment. I will enter your house with burnt offerings and will pay you my vows, which I promised with my lips and spoke with my mouth when I was in trouble. I will offer you sacrifices of fat beasts with the smoke of rams. I will give you oxen and goats. Come and listen, all you who fear God, and I will tell you what he has done for me. I called out to him with my mouth, and his praise was on my tongue. If I had found evil in my heart, the Lord would not have heard me. But in truth, God has heard me. He has attended to the voice of my prayer. Bless, blessed be God who has not rejected my prayer, nor withheld his love from me. Our second reading is 1 Peter 3, 13-22. Now, who will harm you if you are eager to do what is good? But even if you do suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear, and do not be intimidated, but in your heart sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands for you and accounting for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear so that when you are maligned, those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good. If suffering should be God's will, then to suffer for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison who in former times did not obey when god waited patiently in the days of noah during the building of the ark in which a few that is eight persons were saved through the water and baptism which was prefigured now saves you not as a renewal of death died from the body but as an appeal to god for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. The word of the Lord.
Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said to his disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of Truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. I will leave, not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live. You also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We're now six weeks into the Easter season, and next Thursday is the day of ascension. As you know, that's the moment when Jesus returns to the Father. And then two more Sundays and we celebrate Pentecost. We are a people blessed by God with a new vision, a new way to live. It's the Jesus way, the way of love and compassion and a willingness to be in service to one another. This is to imitate the example of Jesus. He is our role model. He came not to be served, but to serve. And we are an Easter people. We are made new in the image and likeness of Jesus through our baptism and our baptism into his death and resurrection. The readings today give us Paul speaking with the sages in Athens about Jesus. And then we have another reading from the first letter of Peter. We've been reading progressively through that first letter. And then the reading from John, which is Jesus preparing the disciples for the coming of the Advocate or the Holy Spirit. The Advocate will support their work and will lead them ever deeper into the truth concerning Jesus and God's plan for salvation. In these days of pandemic and social isolation, we need perhaps hear Peter again with fresh ears and a real-time connection to our situation and his. Christians in the 90s AD or a minority in most of the towns and villages where Peter's letter was circulated. They were regarded by neighbors as strange, even aliens who were upsetting the status quo. Peter warns them that this behavior is likely to continue. Be prepared. As we look around in our current situation, we discover that we are, as Christians, regarded as strange, even alien folks who, according to one definition, believe six impossible things before breakfast. Not true, but it's an accusation that has been made. There seem to be many within the larger church who at the present time want to emphasize Freedom to worship at any time, in any place, regardless of any outcomes. This implies that we have 
No need to be concerned about the well-being of our neighbors, whether they are Christians or not. You may remember reading in the newspaper about a church in Korea that was discovered to have been a source of a huge number of COVID-19 infections and as a result had to be closed. I remind each of us that we have a fundamental obligation to protect and care for the least, the left out, and the weakest among us. My freedom and yours does not include the right to infect someone else with a deadly virus. What we are obliged to do as those who follow Jesus is to be concerned for and protective of, insofar as we can, everyone around us. This is part of what it means to love our neighbors as ourselves. An element of the law, as Jesus reminded us, love God, love your neighbor. It may be inconvenient. It may have a cost. We are not excused from these particular responsibilities for those reasons. We may get frustrated. We may be stressed, but we need to hold on and remember what Jesus endured for us as our Lord and Savior. We need to pray hard to resist the temptation to give up and let the evil one win. Peter also gives us a new insight, I think, into the Noah event from Genesis. It's more than just a big rain, a floating zoo, and a happy ending with a rainbow and a safe landing. Peter asks us to see the story as anticipating baptism, dying, rising, taking up new life. For Christians, that's what baptism is, dying, rising, and taking up a new life in Jesus. Paul reminds us in one of his important letters to the Romans that we have died with Christ and have been raised up with him to new life. This new life as we seek to live it is shaped by the example of Jesus and is aided by the work of the Holy Spirit in us and with us. This new life is shaped by grace, mercy, and compassion. As we regularly repent, confess our failures, and seek to begin again, we are upheld and nurtured by the gift of the Holy Spirit and the assurance of God's forgiveness. The collect we read today has been in service to the larger church for over 13 centuries. And it reminds us that we are to love God in all things and in all persons and above all things. When the Trinity is at the center of our lives day in and day in and day in, we are able to risk, to dare, to seek God's will at all times and in all places. As we love God, so let us love our neighbor. Let us pray. Holy One, in your love you sent Jesus to redeem us from sin and death. We wait now for the renewal of the Holy Spirit in your church. Send, we pray, that advocate who keeps us aligned with all your purposes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us join in reciting the Nicene Creed.
We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people is taken from the Book of Occasional Services, the Litany of Healing. Let us name before God those for whom we offer our prayers. We pray especially for those who are on our prayer list at St. Anne's and St. John's. We lift them up before Almighty God, asking for his healing power, if it is God's will that they may be healed. God the Father, your will for all people is health and salvation. We praise you and we thank you, O Lord. God the Son, you came that we might have life and might have it abundantly. We praise you and thank you, O Lord. God the Holy Spirit, you make our bodies the temple of your presence. We praise you and thank you, O Lord. Holy Trinity, one God, in you we live and move and have our being. We praise you and thank you, O Lord. Lord, grant your healing grace to all who are sick, injured, or disabled, that they may be made whole. Hear us, Lord of life. Grant to all who seek your guidance and to all who are lonely, anxious, or despondent, knowledge of your will and an awareness of your presence. Hear us, O Lord of life. Men broken relationships and restore those in emotional distress to soundness of mind and serenity of spirit. Hear us, O Lord of life. Bless physicians, nurses, and all others who minister to the suffering, granting them wisdom and skill, sympathy and patience. Hear us, O Lord of life. Grant to the dying peace and a holy death, and uphold by the grace and consolation of your Holy Spirit those who are bereaved. Hear us, O Lord of life. Restore to wholeness whatever is broken by human sin in our lives, in our nation, and in the world. Hear us, O Lord of life. You are the Lord who does wonders. You have declared your power among the peoples. With you, O Lord, is the well of life, and in your light we see light. Hear us, O Lord of life. Heal us 
and make us whole. Let us pray. Almighty God, giver of life and health, send your blessing on all who are sick and upon those who minister to them that all weakness may be vanquished by the triumph of the risen Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us now confess our sins before God and our neighbors on page 360. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and sacrifice to God. All things come of you, O Lord, and of your own have we given you. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and grace. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, but chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, for he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death 
and by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the holy food the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah! My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving as I proclaim your resurrection. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. 
Since I cannot receive you in the sacrament of your body and blood, come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you live in me in this life and the life to come. Amen. Amen. We have been told, we've seen his together the prayer of thanksgiving on page 365 in the prayer books. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and his risen Son, Jesus our Lord, and the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah.